Hello listeners, as I record it is July 22nd and this is episode number 8 of How Do You Write. This week I had the extreme pleasure of interviewing Naomi Munawira, who is a local Oakland writer. Um, Something I've been trying to do is expand my uh, writers that I talk to outside of my own um, social pool, so it's been tremendous to um, look up and meet virtually online all these people that I don't know that I hope to know someday. I really enjoyed our chat together. Uh, In the background you can hear that she's at a cafe and for me that's just one of the most soothing sounds because I spend a lot of my time in cafes writing just like she does. And um, in fact when I'm at home and I can't really get going I put on a white noise app that has a cafe sound to it so there's all these kind of mumbled words that you can't really understand and it just makes my brain really really happy so um, I know you will enjoy that interview and in my world catching you up quickly I have just learned that um, while I'm recording on iMovie because I do publish these as videos um, I can cover up my face which is something that I've never thought of doing because when you are talking to your computer it's it's weird to be checking your hair. So I just have to let you know that's a very happy thing in my life right now. Um, I haven't been doing much writing of new words this week. There's been a bunch of editing and some essay work and moving things around, um, some busy work, but I'm kind of itching to get back into the new words drafting phase because that means eventually I'll be in the revision phase, which is my favorite phase. On Monday, I'm gonna start a new book, which is uh, under contract to Random House Australia. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, it's the third book in the Darling Songbird series, and I, I'm i loving this series, so I can't wait to get in and start telling Lana's story. I should probably do some plotting this weekend, and I will do that. In um, random news, I got one of those uh, Redfin announcements that says our house actually might have this much equity. And because we bought in 2006 and the economy collapsed in 2008, we've never had even a dime of equity. We've, in fact, been negative hundreds of thousands of dollars in our house. So, of course, that led to some late night Googling and holy crap should we move to Oregon thinking so I'm running on little sleep because I was looking at properties Um, you probably know how this goes but there is that dream of moving to the small town where everybody knows your name and um, so I spent too much time doing that but I don't know I uh, you can hear it in my voice I love Oakland I have lived here a long time this is my home and it's where my people are so I don't know exciting thoughts doesn't hurt to think right Um, And right now, while I'm working from home and Lala is looking for a job but can work remotely at what she does, you know, why not? So it's a thought. It's a a very, very small thought. But um, that's writing world all caught up for you. And now let's jump into the interview. I know you'll enjoy it. And we will talk soon. Well, I'm here with Naomi Munawira, and she has her debut novel, Island of a Thousand Mirrors was long listed for the Man Asia Prize and won the Commonwealth Regional Prize for Asia. It was shortlisted for the DSC Prize for South Asian Literature and the Northern California Book Prize. And I love this. The New York Times called the book Luminous and Publishers Weekly has compared her voice to that of Michael Andache and Jumpa Dairi. And her second novel, What Lies Between Us, uh, is currently on my TBR pile. It looks amazing. And it has been one of the most anticipated releases of 2016 having been featured on both BuzzFeed and Elle Magazine's Best of 2016. She lives in my town, Oakland, California, and she is working on her third novel. Welcome, Naomi. Great. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much. Um, for anybody watching the YouTube, where are you in a, are you working in a cafe right now? I am. Yes. I am in um, Arbor Cafe, which is a really wonderful hipster cafe that I ride at a lot. It's right around the corner from my house, so I'm nice. quite a bit. I, I like that one. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's jump right into your process. What is the best time of day for you to write? I'm going to guess the morning, since yes. you're there. <laughs> yes. Um, I am definitely someone that thinks that... Um, the line between the writing world and the dream world is is something that's really nebulous and uh, a line that can be crossed. And uh, that's something that I use quite a bit. So morning, usually pretty early morning, I 
um, if I'm not, if I haven't done anything the night before, I usually wake up naturally at about six yeah. um, or seven, and I like to be writing at about eight. So, um, and also, my books are quite dark. The things I like to write about are dark subject matters. So I usually don't write at night. Um, I will do some research at night sometimes, but usually by the time the sun goes down, I'm off. But um, morning is usually my time for writing. I think it's interesting that you connected the darkness of your writing with not writing at night. Can you tell me more about that? Is that because oh, it will just, slip into your dreams or upset them? I just don't want to have nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> that makes me want to read your books even Good. more. Yeah. I love dark. And how do you write? Do you longhand computer? Um, when I start a book, I it's longhand. It's mm -hmm. lots of notes. Um, I actually have a big black book that has all the novel ideas, the beginnings. Um, and then, I mean, so I'm working on my third. My first novel, um, I didn't know I was writing a novel. So it took a really, it took a long time to figure out. I what did you think you were writing? Well, I was <laughs> getting a PhD. Uh. So, yeah, so it was... Um, <laughs> I thought I was writing a dissertation, an academic <laughs> dissertation. Yeah. Um, so that happened for quite a while. And then eventually I had to um, drop out of grad school because the novel was too insistent. That's um, awesome. Yeah. I so, say congrats um, to that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully it all worked out. I mean, it took a very long time. It took about nine years of writing and another year to find, not another two years to find a publisher. So 12 yeah. years altogether. Um, so when I was writing that book, I started in the in my big book, sort of making notes and stuff. And at a certain point, I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm writing a novel." Um, <laughs> and then there's a second novel that is in my computer that I've never sort of I haven't published and I haven't looked at for a long time. The book that came out as the second novel is actually the third novel. That took about yeah. Okay. And how long that, did that take? That took about four years. Okay. Of, of three years of like really intense writing. Yeah. Um, and this new one is coming much more quickly. Like it came in September and I've been working on it quite a bit. Um, so I started longhand and then quite more and more quickly I get on the computer. Now it's almost like within a month or two I'm on the computer and I'm wow. putting it out. Yeah. And what program do you use? Word. Yeah. Word. Yeah. Traditional Word. I the talked to somebody. I talked to somebody yeah. the other day that was still using Word Perfect. Remember that? I yes. I didn't even know that was still a possibility. Wow, I didn't even think about that. You know, so I've, I've been interested in like Scribner and whatnot, but I don't know. It's it seems a little complicated. I'm a little I, afraid of it. Yeah. I love Scrivener, and I will always recommend people use it. And for me, I say use as few bells and whistles as you can. Learn how to type in it. And then if you learn some extra things, that's great. But otherwise, you can move things around real easily. And it's pretty intuitive unless you try to do too much. And then it is it is a little bit overwhelming. A little bit, but yeah. I love it. I like the word. It's like simple, yeah. you know. It's yeah. like clean and yeah. If yeah. anything, my, my notes, actually, my research notes are all um, in, a, in a different folder. They're all mm -hmm. handwritten. So there's that going on, too. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And where do you write most and why? Um, usually in this cafe. Uh-huh. Um, off the, it's right around the corner from my house and if I'm feeling uh, you know, and the thing is about being a writer is like it's quite an introverted lonely yeah. thing so when I'm feeling like extra like oh I want to be around people but not talk to them you know and like be in my own head and be like talking to these people I made up I come here right? um, or I write in bed at home um, yeah, yeah with a, with, usually with a cat sort of sitting <laughs> on me or sitting on my head or um, to me, that's what? kind of heavenly, honestly, like the whole writing in bed. And I, I have a problem. I don't know if you find this, but I have a problem of I write for a while and then I, and then I just get sleepy and I mm -hmm. start sliding down. And I, if, so that's why I don't write much in bed because I end up in a nap. Ah, <laughs> never a bad thing because, you know, like sleep and dream, I think, is yeah. like um, a kind of direct portal into yeah. writing um, or the unconscious. So uh, like I'm right now because I'm working on another book and I'm like deep, deep in it, I'm doing the research and. Um, a lot of ideas have been coming from dream and have been coming as soon as I wake up. So I think that that like, connection is it's not a bad thing. I think that's know? beautiful. And you're lucky there's a lot of people who can't remember their dreams, who can't harness them that way. Mine, mine never seem to correlate mm -hmm. into my work for some reason. I wish they would. Mm -hmm. um, what secret writing tip of awesomeness did you discover the hard way? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
gosh. I had an, I thought about this and I had an answer and now I've like completely forgotten. Um, yeah, you know, I think, okay, I'll tell you this. I think take the time with the project. And I think there's a lot of pressure to like publish and I think there's a lot of pressure to like get it out. And, um, but, you know, I'm a big believer in not letting people see it until mm. you are very, very satisfied with it. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, my first book, I didn't know what I was doing for a long time. And then at some point I'm like, oh, I'm writing a novel. And I didn't tell people. I did not tell people for years that that's what I was doing just because I feel like there's too much pressure. Literally no one? My sister? Yeah. Yeah, my sister knew. I, maybe my parents because I had dropped out of grad school and that was the worst <laughs> thing that like, could ever happen to them. Uh, and they were like, oh, what are you doing? Um, so, yeah, not for a long time. I mean, and then the first person that's... The, I had a few early readers and then... I mean, I hadn't published anything until the novel came out, the first novel. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it was the first thing. And I think that I spent a lot of time with it alone and just really, I didn't let anyone see it until it was as good as I could make it. What, what, uh, what draft were you at? Was oh it like God. draft 82 or something? <laughs> or? Well, or we read like a lot. Yeah. I mean, many, many years, you know, like the yeah. finished book had very, very little of that had remained from the beginning so I don't even know uh, like did that make it hard say, to be edited I wonder um no no okay no because I gave them a pretty clean manuscript at the end of the day that's because nice. I had worked yeah because I had worked on it so much of course I did get edited and that's that's just a normal thing and that's, you should be open to that and all yeah. of that but I think just my advice or whatever like the awesome thing is just like be really patient with it I like for me this is like kind of it's as I write about very dark things the first book was about the civil war in Sri Lanka two women going through the civil war the second one is about the consequences of childhood trauma on mm -hmm. adult lives and how that manifests in maternity and our, our like ways of mothering so it's a dark book about maternity and then this third one is about a really bad guy. Mm. Uh, did you just did you that just was throw it? That was a, a cat. dog. I, no, oh. it was a cat. I flew across the screen because he jumped fabulous. on the computer. Fabulous, fabulous. I love flying cats. I should I should have stayed home and there, so spoke to our cats. And then here. there's the like there's the small oh. dog that's oh, trying to get hello. the cat. Yeah. So there's there's a there's a whole like catnip slash bone thing I have to do before oh. I record a podcast right. to try to keep them quiet. Very and, important. How do you refill your creative well when you're running dry? Oh, reading. Yeah. Reading. reading. Yeah. Is there anything that yeah. jumps out at you that you've read lately that you loved? I hate asking this without asking you first because as soon as anybody asks me that, I go blank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a million things, but like right now, just because I was reading it last night, I'm reading, um, I don't read a lot of graphic novels, but mm -hmm. I'm reading Alan Moore's graphic novel from hell. Alan Moore's oh. great. Oh, we're we're a graphic so novel house. Yeah. <laughs> so amazing and I like this is something I've been wanting to read for a long time and then I read um Neil Gaiman just put out his collection of um non-fiction called The View from the Cheap Seats oh I didn't know that oh my god yeah uh -huh. I'm gonna rush get out, that I will rush out and get that it's all his um so it's an essay collection essay oh. collection awesome. and it's fat and huge and it's everything he's written for years like decades oh. yeah <laughs> okay, then I have, there's, so, there's more plans for my reading. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, so there's all of that. And then in that, I should be, at some point, he was talking about Alan Moore and talking about um, From Hell. And he was talking, he had written something that came out just as the book was being released. So then I remembered, oh, I wanted to read that. And it sort of ties into the third book I'm working on. Oh, so. perfect. Uh, yeah. Well, and the world does that, right? When we're writing oh, totally. everything, you know, totally. somebody something somebody says fits in magically. I, I believe in that. I, I feel like everything opens up and everything suddenly is connected to the project. Yeah. 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 It's, it's magic. Can you give us a quick craft tip? Sure. Um, so I heard this at Squaw Valley Community of Writers when I was there from Janet Fitch, who is amazing. She wrote White Oleander and played oh, yeah. that. Black, yeah, yeah. She's so amazing. Um, and she was talking about character, and she said this very simple thing that actually I took to heart is like when you write dialogue, um, the reader learns as much from the words as from gesture. Mm. So if you put in the gesture, like, oh, she touched her face, or, you know, she flipped her hair, or, you know, that's mm -hmm. silly stuff, but like some sort of movement that the reader 
can picture, if you infuse your dialogue with that, um, it's really powerful. And it's a way that the reader can see what's happening. Well, and that makes sense because as humans, we, we gauge what we learn from other people by listening and watching them. So exactly. that's the way to put that on the page. Exactly. So that's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. And what, so would you like to tell us about the book that's most recently out, which is, I said it earlier, what's the name of it? What Lies Between Us. Yes. Would you like to yes. tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so What Lies Between Us came out in February of this year, 2016. Mm -hmm. um, it is the confession of a woman who's committed a really terrible crime. I'm uh, in. Oh, oh good. <laughs> Um, so she's in jail and she's going to tell you, it's her confession and it's also like her, she's going to take you on the journey of her life and help you understand why she did this really, really awful thing. Um, and I'm really looking at maternity. It's a book that's in dialogue with Beloved and with, um, mm -hmm. We Need to Talk About Kevin, mm -hmm. which, yeah, which yes. both of, you know, they're amazing books. Um, and yeah, I mean, I'm always interested in women and what happens to women's bodies. Like that's kind of my primary concern. Um, I'm interested in violence enacted upon women's bodies and where that's coming from, um, how we deal with it, the consequences, et cetera, et cetera. So, and in terms of setting, it's between Sri Lanka and Oakland. Is that right? Did I, did um, I it's that right? one third in Sri Lanka and two thirds actually in San Francisco. San Francisco. Okay. And a little bit in Oakland. Yes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's great. I cannot yeah. wait to read that. And readers, I, or listeners, I will uh, put the show, the notes and the, the link in the show notes for that. And where Fabulous. can listeners find you? Oh, um, I am, let me see. Besides uh, at the cafe. Yeah, besides at the cafe. Don't come here. No. no, that would be creepy and weird. <laughs> that would be very creepy and weird. Um, let's see. You can go to my website, which is just www.naomimunavira.com, or you can find me on Amazon. Um, on Goodreads and on Twitter. I, just I, my name. I saw you on Twitter and I'm, I'm definitely going to Insta follow you because you, oh, good. I could, I could see you sharing good. a lot of the politics I felt last night while we were watching yeah. the convention. Oh. So. <laughs> <sighs> I mean, the only sort of like light in all of this is like Jon Stewart. Cause yeah. it's, I mean, besides being heartbreaking and terrifying, yeah. it's funny as hell yeah he like, is yeah. and he looks good with the beard i know it's nice it's, nice. it's like it's really comforting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. okay naomi it's been what it's such a pleasure to talk to you thank yeah. you for taking time out of your writing to do this Sweet. and i hope that you get yeah. a lot of writing done today and this week yes thank you so much yeah. i'll i'm sure we'll run into each other soon. yes i'll enjoy that thanks naomi okay. bye, bye.